Why can't it just drain out the hole? I don't understand that. The hole. Welcome to the wonderful world of Can Am Outlander Wrestling with body panels and foot wells. <laughs> so this was a win. Marauders, welcome back to the channel. Please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel, and sharing this video with someone else. Today, I'm going to show you how to change the oil, at least how I do it, on a Can-Am Outlander Max. And uh, I'll start off by pulling it outside and letting it warm up while I gather some tools. So inside the garage with the heater running, I can hear the fan kick on on the ATV outside. Been running probably about 11 minutes idling. So I think it's ready to bring in and, and dump the oil. I am far from an expert on working on these machines and especially changing the oil. But people wanted to see how I do it. I need to change the oil so I'm gonna show it. See the engines up to operating temperature. This this oil just looks so good. Fun while working on these Can Am changing oil. So here is the oil drain plug. They tell you to clean it. Mine is remarkably clean around it. So I'm gonna remove it. I think you can see it. There's two stanchions, steel stanchions that hold up the right side foot well. And the oil drain plug is in a hole, round hole, by the forward stanchion, just in from that. I'll give you a look. Leaves fall. Okay, let's pull it. Can it, why can't it just drain out the hole? I don't understand that. The hole is almost directly, directly centered in the bottom pan of the engine and it just splatters all over. Um, you know, I also wonder if that's a result of, that I really let it warm up. The oil's hot, very hot, and uh, but just makes a mess. Maybe if it wasn't jacked up, it wouldn't be so messy. I don't know. Let's let that drain. Now we have to remove the side panel. And to do that, we have to remove the seat. I'm gonna pull the front shroud off. And the reason I pull the front shroud off, there is a screw right here that I always forget about. I think there's only one. Two. One more pin I gotta pull out. In the inside rear fender. And then to remove the tub, this is another one that's a, that fights you. That bolt's gonna come out. We'll do that last. Then there's one more push pin in the front fender or plastic rivet. The oil filter we have to get to and now we have to remove the tub. 
the foot well. Now we have to remove the foot well. There's a 30 torque screw right inside the inner fender you have to pull. There's one front and back on the outside. Here's a, that 10 millimeter bolt, which I think has a nut on the back of it. And that's what I worry about. I'm working over the drain. I got the nut, but dropped the bolt. But I think it ended up on the cardboard I put underneath it. Now the fender can be separated from the tub. And you wanna leave the tub bolted down while you do this because they have these little oh, see how it's coming loose there's tabs from the fender that go into the wheel tub and you pull the tabs back and lift up on the fender to break it loose the gas cap holds the fender down so I have to release the gas cap. And I hate to say it, yes, I'm trying not to swear as I do this. So once I release those tabs from the fender that are in the foot well, then, then that, the rear of the foot well is loose and I can move to doing the same procedure at the front of the machine. Okay, let's do the front. After you remove the torque screw, then you have those five plastic tabs from the fender that go into the foot well. And this is why you leave the foot well bolted, because now it's much easier to pull those tabs up and the fender out. There's two more plastic rivets I gotta pull from it. Please don't ask me to show you the reassembly of this. <laughs> and undo all the bolts. 10 millimeter bolts that hold the wheel tub in place. Now there are four 10 millimeter bolts with 10 millimeter nuts that hold the wheel tub to the mount that on the footrest for the passenger. And then I believe there are another five 10 millimeter bolts that hold the foot tub to the peg or foot tub mount. And those are, are have threads already in them. So you do need a, a, rent, a, a wrench or socket to back up, removing the bolts from the passenger foot well, but you don't for the driver's foot well. And those come out pretty easily, but that's, you know, we're getting towards the end of removing this. I also remove five bolts on the top of the rear fender so that I can lift the fender up and se separate it from the foot well. So I turn the camera off and then tug one more time and the fender comes loose. Okay, let's see if I can get it off in the front and pull it up and out. Welcome to the wonderful world of Can-Am Outlander Wrestling with body panels and foot wells. I did, a reass I did videotape reassembling this and I used a small uh, pry bar, very thin pry bar, and it made everything so much easier. It almost looks like a, ro a, a long double forked um, um, screwdriver, about two and a half feet long. Highly recommend buying one of those. They're not expensive, but it made this process much easier. And I erased all the video. I did an outstanding reassembly of the body panels on this machine, and I apologize, I'm so upset. I erased all the footage, but I, I think if you take it off, you'll be able to figure out how to reassemble it. Now, here's the problem. The foot well gets caught between the bottom of the crankcase cover and the foot brake, and you can't, it just can't get it out. And here's that pry bar I'm talking about. It looks like a long screwdriver. It made my life so much easier when I started using this tool, especially the reassembly. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> okay, you wanted to see it. <laughs> I, 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 
not happy about changing the oil on these can ams. Okay, all this work. And boy, I hope you comment. If you know an easier way to do this, can am people, you let me know. I hope I'm not hurting can am sales by showing this. All this work. To get to two things. The oil filter, the engine oil filter here. And then down below is the drain plug which you can't see, I'm gonna to have to show you in another shot, is the drain plug for the transmission. One good thing is the transmission fill plug is really easy to get to on this unit. I was worrying about that. The transmission fill plug is here, if you can see that. Okay, so what a mess. So next thing I have to do is change, pull off the oil filter cover. Highly recommend you get oil absorbent mats. I think they're called pig mats or oil pig mats. They come in a roll. And I put a couple of sheets underneath the engine between the engine and the frame because when I pull off the oil filter cover, the oil's gonna run all over the engine and into the frame. It just makes a big mess. This was a good move on my part, made for a much neater job. Not easy to film this, but let's try it. An oil change kit has a new O-ring for here. I'm actually ha glad to see that the oil filter is dirty. <sighs> Makes this all seem somewhat worthwhile. But it did its job. So I'm happy to see that. Let's look at an oil filter. I'm actually gonna try to remove the, the footwell support, and I didn't do that the last time. And I'm gonna do that to get to the, hopefully get to the drain plug for the transmission. Gotta loosen the brake mount. I'm not gonna take it off. I'm just gonna try to loosen it. So there are four 10 millimeter bolts carriage bolts that hold on the foot peg and the foot well mount and you remove those and then I want to say there's 15 millimeter to 15 millimeter carriage bolts that hold the foot brake lever mount on then a tab from the foot peg goes underneath that and if you loosen the brake lever the foot brake lever mount loosen it not take it off just loosen it enough where you can pull the foot well out, the, the foot well mount out. It makes the job much easier removing the transmission drain plug and re reinstalling it. Makes it much easier. Highly recommend doing this. We're gonna undo the drain, the transmission fill plug, 15 millimeter. And that's the crush pin ring for that. We got a replacement for that in our kit, we should. And then 13 millimeter, we're gonna undo the transmission drain plug, which is not in the best of spots. It's right underneath the brake lever. And that's a 13 millimeter bolt. Well, I hope you can see this. There we go. That's the transmission fluid. And it does have a crush ring on it. Now, removing the footwell support made this much, much easier. Much easier. I can't tell you. I and and I had to take the brake lever off. So it wasn't too bad. To remove this footwell support, I had to undo the brake lever mount, just loosen them because it goes underneath them and then undo uh, four bolts and nuts, carriage bolts and nuts that hold it on. It was well worth the added effort to do that. Oh wow, and 
and I'm glad I did the transmission. Look at the dirt that's on the end of the transmission drain plug. Wow, can you see that? Wow, a lot of gunk on that. So while that's draining, let's go look at the kit. Oil change kit from Can-Am, which sometimes are in very short supply. Very interesting. It looks like they don't give you, you can see the package. It looks like they do not give you, and, and look at the stuff. I shoot that with brake cleaner. It looks like they do not give you the O-ring for the transmission fill, fill bolt. They don't give you that O-ring, but that's okay. I don't know if they need it. It looks like they give you the O-ring the crush ring for the oil drain, the crush ring for the transmission drain, and the O-ring for the oil filter. So that's what they give you. That's the drain plug crush ring. That's the oil, that's the transmission drain plug crush ring. And then we're reusing the oil, the transmission fill plug crush ring. Okay, so those are set to go. Light on me. Engine drain plug is clean. Gonna put a little oil on it. Probably don't have to, but I'm just gonna put a little oil. Okay, let's put the transmission drain plug in. That's clean. Put a little oil around that. This one is not the easiest to get in. And this is a 13 millimeter. And I'm gonna to torque these after. We'll go around and torque everything. Let's get the oil filter. See the difference in the oil filters? Can you see those? So they say, the manual says to tighten these to 15 foot-pounds. Okay, so that's 15 foot-pounds. Now let's do the drain plug to 15 foot-pounds for the transmission. Let's put the oil filter in. So this side goes in, Rotax. Let's put that in. When you install the oil filter, center it in the oil filter housing and it will take a seat. You can push it in about a quarter to three eighths of an inch. The same thing with the oil filter cover. If you, it will take a seat and, and go between the outside lip of the oil filter and the inside lip of the oil filter housing. <laughs> Now the oil cover plate, oil filter cover plate gets, goes to 89 foot pounds inches. I'm just gonna snug them all up. This is my first time using this. I have, a, I have every extension, quarter inch extension I have on this. I don't like that that's not clip. Oh, there we go, I like that. I like it. Easiest thing to fill the transmission fluid. And I I really think, by the way, this is the rear diff and tranny fluid, SA 75140. I, I really think manufacturers have to work on making servicing easy easier. Canium needs to focus on that because this is way more difficult than it should be. I'm only going to put two quarts in. I'm not going to put the quarter quart because I always end up overfilling these. 
And then when I'm done putting the oil in, I'm gonna wash down this area and clean up. So I put two quarts of oil in and could not put any more. It was filled to the brim. I started it and then there was a, an alarm. The oil filter casing filled up with oil. Then it indicated it did not have enough oil to run and it signaled the alarm went off. So I put that probably 10 ounces of that 16 ounce bottle in it and the oil is perfect. I didn't put that whole bottle in, but it's perfect. The first time I ran it without that 10 ounces, an alarm came on on the machine and it said turn it off and I did and uh, I turned it off within seconds. So our oil is topped off and I'm gonna clean up this mess. She's done and put back together. I have to apologize. I took some great video of the reassembly of the body panels and footwell on this machine and really did a great job explaining how everything went back together again. Also how it went, got taken apart. And in, in, talking to someone on the phone, I deleted all of it when I was downloading it from my camera. So I apologize to my viewers. But she's back together. and she's running beautifully. I elected not to install this body panel that covers the engine. It attaches to the side body panel and I elected not to install that for a couple reasons. On my one-up Outlander XTP, I don't have it on as an experiment. And although this area does get hot when you're riding, um, I always wear pants or riding pants and boots when I ride and if any one of my family rides they do the same thing So, so there's no issue with heat um, Burning my leg Actually, it gets a little warm on a 90 degree day. Not bad. Number two I like to get in here and hose off the engine the chassis areas and Clean it off and I can't do that when that body panel is there. So I remove it and I think a lot of people up in Canada do it that run these machines and I I like the I really like the way it looks when it's removed. To look at that big that big uh V twin 1000 cc V twin engine makes 91 horsepower. I want to make it very clear Can Am is a great product and it is a, this is an awesome ATV. Rotex has, Rotex makes these engines for Can-Am. They've been in business for over a hundred years. They started off making bicycle hubs and then went into engines and they make scooter engines. They make small aircraft engines. They make marine engines, snowmobile, um, sea dews and ATV engines and side-by-side -side engines. That aggravation that I went through, changing the oil and transmission fluid on it, for me it's worth it because that engine is why I own a Can-Am. Can-Am quality is excellent, but that engine, the low end torque, the quiet of the engine and the performance is why I go through the aggravation of those oil changes. Maybe I'll have my dealer do them in the future, but for now, to get that engine in a machine, and I might be another one in a side-by-side, -side, looking at a Maverick Sport um, XRC. Um, that engine is outstanding. All these V-twin engines Can-Am has, from the 650 up to the 1000, they make a 650, I'm sorry, 570. Excellent little V-twin, my friend has that. It's an awesome engine. 570, 650, 850, and 1000R. Rotax, good engine. Don't let my comments dissuade you from getting a Can-Am because the oil change is difficult. Viewers have been asking me to do this for a long time. I hope you can learn from my, my successes on this oil change and my failures. Big success. Take out the foot peg, take out the foot peg, and it also serves as the mount 
for the foot well. That makes getting at that transmission oil plug much easier. Number two, this pry bar that looks like a long screwdriver with forks on it. Love it, get it, made it much easier. None of the body panels are scratched on this machine from changing the oil. This helped, just enough leverage to pop the footwell back in place and to pop it out and also to pop the fenders back in place, the fender tabs back in place on the footwell. That's it. As always, as always, thank you for tuning into my channel. Please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing this video with others. Please, if you ride motorsports, wear a helmet for your protection and set an example for others. And I hope to see you on the trail. Thank you and God bless. I'm gonna end this, I'm gonna show you some video of a machine I purchased for my property and also to lease to my company um, for this channel. I hope you enjoy it. I have a lot of projects planned around the house. This was a big purchase for me. Believe it or not, I don't throw my money around. My wife and I talked about this for a long time. So I'll show you the video of the a mini excavator I purchased. You'll be seeing that soon on the channel. Thank you. God bless.